Welcome to Business Infrastructure, the podcast about curing back office blues of fast-growing businesses. If you're a business owner or operator looking for practical tips and solutions to scaling your business in a sustainable manner, you're in the right place. Now here's your hostess, Alicia Butler-Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Business Infrastructure Show, where we share tips and resources to help you cure back office blues. I'm your hostess, Alicia Butler-Pierre, and I'm joined today by speaker extraordinaire, Mr. Des Thornton. Des is a speech writer and speech coach, professionally trained at the University of South Carolina and Dell Carnegie. Des is a past president of the Georgia chapter of the National Speakers Association, as well as the winner of Speak Tank, a speaking competition hosted by the National Speakers Association. He has been a speech coach for TEDx Peach Tree, coached hundreds of professionals and corporate clients, and he even taught a public speaking class for seven years at a federal prison. I'm looking forward to this interview because I recently had the pleasure of seeing Des speak at a conference, and he's absolutely phenomenal. And I'll share with you all later in the interview what I learned from that particular speech. Today, Des is going to share with us the one thing we need to know about high-stakes conversations and presentations. So without any further ado, Des, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing well, Alicia. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here with you. Awesome. Now, before we get into that one thing we need to know about high stakes conversations and presentations, can we start off with you telling us a little bit more about what you do at your company? Absolutely. Happy to do it. Uh, So as you said in the intro, which was beautifully done, by the way, thank you for that. Uh, As you said in the intro, I'm a speech writer and also a speech coach. Uh, Believe it or not, I didn't grow up wanting to be a speech writer or speech coach. I don't know. (laughs) anyone who's grown up and wanted to do that. Um, It's just one of those things that sort of happened over time. And so as far as my business is concerned, I I primarily do three things. So writing for clients, um, helping them to evaluate and create uh, new content in a business environment, Uh, also coaching clients on their delivery uh, in today's um, technological society of short attention spans and high expectations, you know, speakers have to be really good on the platform. So I help them with that delivery. And then lastly is consulting. So I do some consulting for about five companies, uh, which includes things like writing their newsletters and working specifically uh, with some executives on internal communications. Wow, that's a lot. So it's all (laughs) about written as well as oral communication. Yes. So, so critical. Now, if you had to tell us one thing, and I know this isn't a fair question, but if there was one thing that you feel that we need to know about high stakes conversations and presentations, what would that be? The one thing that I think everybody needs to know about high stakes conversations and presentations, particularly today, is the fact that it's not what you say that matters. It's what your audience hears. And I'll take that a little bit further and explain it. And what I mean by that is usually when we communicate something to another person or to a group of people, there's this gap in the middle, and I call it the interpretation gap. And if you have children, then you would be familiar with this gap because the whole idea (laughs) is you say one thing, and then based on the person's response or either the action that they take, it would be clear to you as the sender of that message that they totally didn't hear what you said or either they misinterpreted it. And so that is just a function uh, of communication. It's something that happens at all levels. And so the thing that I think is really, really important is that people make sure that their audience is actually hearing the same thing that they're saying. And that sounds elementary and it sounds basic, but at every level and almost with every client, Um, you know, we have this this experience of this interpretation gap. And so the the one thing that I would say is to make sure that, uh, again, your audience hears what it is you're actually saying. That's actually, so earlier when I was doing, giving your bio, I mentioned how I saw, I had the opportunity to to hear you speak uh, not too long ago. 
And that, that was the one takeaway was it's not what you say, it's what your audience hears. And there was also something that you said, Des, that we should say, that we should ask the person that or people that we may be communicating a, a very important message to. And that is, tell me what you heard. So after we say something, tell me what you heard to make sure that that, I guess, that that interpretation gap is, that there is no interpretation gap. Yes, and when you ask that other person to tell you what they heard, put on your seatbelt, um, because <laughs> it is amazing um, what people hear versus what you actually say. And I've had some corporate clients who I've drilled this into, and so they've gotten the habit of asking folks to just you know, run it back or play back or tell me what you just heard. And in the beginning, um, there was a huge gap in between what was said and what was heard. But over time, uh, what we noticed is that gap was closed. And I think it's due largely to the fact that I think there's an old saying that, you know, what gets measured gets done and all those types of things. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone is going to, if you know that someone is going to be asking you to play back, you know, what they just said, then we have a tendency to listen more intently, sort of like if you know mm. there's going to be a, a quiz at the end of something that's discussed, it's like you're going to listen to that with more intensity. And so in communicating today, you know, that's critically important because we get so many impressions from, you know, media, social media, and all these other things that, you know, it's very easy for us to kind of listen passively to people. And of course, in a business environment, most of the time, you know, the communications are critical because the actions follow the communications. I'm thinking of a song and I, 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 I'm thinking of a lyric from a song and I, I, the name of the song right now is escaping me, but it, the lyric basically says, you only see what you want to see, or I've also heard the expression, you only hear what you want to hear. Um, do you find that m most people are, are guilty of that? Yeah, I think it's just the, I think that's a human condition. I think we're, yeah. you know, we're all that way. And so what I've done historically is um, listen intently to people. And when you can listen, when you listen well to people and you can repeat back to them some of the things that they said, what I found is you gain uh, that person's or that group of people's uh, trust faster. And my mom used to have a saying when I was a kid, she used to say, uh, take the cotton out of your ears and put it in your mouth. And basically <laughs> what she was training me to do at a young age, which I didn't know was just to shut up and listen to people. Um, so that's a good habit that I developed at a very, very uh, young age. And it served me well throughout my life and specifically throughout my career. Now, there may be some people who are listening to this who are who may be wondering, well, what's considered a high stakes conversation or presentation? Can you give us some examples of what that might look like in a business setting? Absolutely. I'll, I guess I'll start with the presentations and work backwards. Okay. So most folks tend to think of uh, when you think of a big presentation today, most people think of TED events or something like a TED event. So I believe that anytime that you're going to be putting your reputation on the line, um, that's high stakes. Um, and I always say to my clients, I, I tell them to imagine that they have two sparkling diamonds sitting in front of them. And those diamonds represent your reputation. So they represent the blood, sweat, tears, time, sacrifice, everything that you've put into building your business to the point where it is today, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been in business for years. And then the question that I ask them is, how do you present those diamonds to the world? And the reality is you only have two choices. So you either present it in something that looks like a, you know, a tattered, worn cardboard box, or you present it in a beautifully wrapped gift. Uh, and there really is no in between. And the, the, the choices or the action that people are going to take is going to be based on how you present, you know, your information or your reputation to them. So I always say that, you know, reputation gets you in the door, but presentation keeps you in the room. And so to go back to your question, you know, as far as a presentation is concerned, I would say whether it's presentation or conversation, if your reputation is at stake, then I would consider that to be high stakes. 
But as far as what it formally looks like, you know, it could be a TED event or it could be, you know, any large conference where you're going to be standing in front of, you know, business people and trying to persuade them to do business with you. Or even if you're just there to give information, it's like people are going to make a judgment based on what they hear. Uh, and then as far as the conversation side of it, the conversation uh, could just be something as simple as a one-on-one a -on -one lunch where you're with a prospect and you're trying to, you know, move forward in the sales process. Or it could be that, you know, you're going in and talking to, you know, if you work within a corporation, you could be going in to talk to your director or supervisor, and it could be your evaluation, you know, conversation about you possibly getting a raise or positioning yourself for another position. Um, if When you think about it, you know, words are the currency that we use to communicate with each other and subsequently to take actions. And so I believe that if you have a goal of achieving something and you have to use words in order to convince the other party or the other people that they should take that desired action, then I would consider that to be high stakes. Mm, well said. Now, if we could tie this into business infrastructure. And if you're listening to this show for the first time, business infrastructure is nothing more than a system for linking your people, processes, and tools together to ensure growth in a profitable and sustainable way. As I've been listening to you, Des, I started thinking about this example of a CEO, I'm trying to be very vague, as vague as I can. <laughs> okay. there, there is a CEO that I know and a fairly large company. And he had to communicate the fact that there were going to be some layoffs. Uh -huh. And I remember, again, if we're trying to tie this into business infrastructure, so he had an entire team of people and they got together for months before he even made the first official announcement and I remember thinking like wow you know this this is really serious I mean obviously it's a very, that is definitely a high stakes message to communicate and, and he had to deliver it in the right way and so he had I remember there were some marketing folks and there were HR people who were getting involved and he had a communications manager and they spent a lot of time really crafting that message. So if you had to identify maybe generically or if you'd like to share a very specific example, that would be even better. But who are some of the people that you should rely on or maybe tap the shoulder of to to get help in putting together whether it be a presentation or a, a very important message that you need to communicate to your employees um i guess so the first thought are now let me be are you talking within a company or are you talking to people who are like entrepreneurs or solopreneurs so most of the people who are listening are so you know they're solopreneurs they they're they're business owners and so a lot of times they are you know there's all types of communication there's communication to your colleagues there's communication to your staff there's communication to your suppliers and your vendors right yeah so i guess let me go back to the example that you just gave um so okay. the example that you gave with the ceo and the large corporation um i think that that is a great approach to doing something like that. And I've actually been involved in a process similar where um, a, a certain group of people were gonna be laid off. It wasn't necessarily a large company. There was probably a, 100 employees in the company, but there was a certain group of people that were gonna be laid off. And so there's sort of two things that the executive had to deal with there. One is, you know, what is the reason that we're letting these people go? And then secondly, it's like, what does it mean for the people that are left behind? And so not being in that room, but I can imagine the scenario where they're probably on a whiteboard or something where they're writing out, you know, all the different possibilities and things that can, that can happen. Yes. And I think that, um, that individuals should seek out what I call a thought partner. And I actually look at myself as more of a thought partner in terms of function of my work than a speech coach. And what I mean by that is having uh, someone to serve as a thought partner for you, number one, what they can do is just evaluate uh, the information that you want, that you're going to communicate, uh, just like in your industry or all, 
or folks who are listening, you know, you're experts within your industry. And so you know what the standard of excellence is. However, because we all start communicating for most people around two years old, we start using words. And, you know, when you grow to an adult, you figure, okay, I've got this word thing down now. I've been doing it for 30 years, (laughs) you know? So it's like, what do I need to learn about words? But what I found in my work is that most times people are too close to their content Mm -hmm. to look at it objectively. And so it's the whole saying of it's hard to read the label from inside the bottle. Yes. And so having a speech coach or a communications coach, someone who could be a thought partner for you, again, they can help you see that content objectively, number one. And I always use the example of a jeweler. Uh, A jeweler sort of appraises a diamond to look at the quality and character to tell how clear and compelling it is. Well, I look at myself in the same way when people are communicating messages. I want to know, number one, what's the quality of what you're saying? So going back to the... um, to, to the CEO who had to, you know, fire this group of people, you know, what's the quality of the message? What's the character of the message that you're, you know, delivering? And then how clear and compelling is what you're actually saying? So there's, you know, several, um, and I could go down a, a huge rabbit hole here, which I won't do, but to answer your question specifically, you know, I think it's important to seek out someone to serve as a thought partner. And it does not necessarily have to be someone who's trained in communication. I think that at a basic level, you can get value from just sharing your ideas with someone else that you trust to hear back from them, you know, what they actually think. And in terms of, so we've talked about people in process. Now, in terms of tools, one of the things, going back to that example of the CEO who had to communicate the fact that there were, there would soon be some company layoffs. I remember because, because there were some employees who were not, necessarily in the same country as this person. Mm -hmm. They opted to do these town hall sessions and they did them virtually where there was a video involved. So rather than communicating that through email, they actually chose to use a, a tool that would allow for almost like a video conference, if you will. Um, yes. They called it like a town hall. And I thought that was that helped to soften the blow a little bit as opposed to communicating something like so as serious as that just via, you know, an email or God forbid, receiving a letter, <laughs> a physical letter uh, in the mail or even, you know, when you show up uh, to work one day. So if you had to talk about the types of communication tools what are some tools that you would recommend that people use? Okay. So the first thing I would say, just going back to um, what you just mentioned, I think, you know, what that situation and the way that it was handled by the executives sound like they did it very textbook um, because when you allow people to ask questions in that scenario, then the questions basically say that you care. So instead of sending a letter or an email, you know, that's sort of a a one-way communication just by having a video conference and answering folks questions about what's going on uh, says that you care about them, excuse me, and show some compassion. Um, As far as the tools, uh, I believe that the main tool that you should use when you're communicating is to have some type of graphic or some type of visual to serve as a model to represent your thoughts. And so in my business, I created a, what I call the diamond delivery model. And it's essentially based off of a baseball diamond. And the idea is you place at home plate at first base, second base, third base, different ideas that you're going to communicate. And what happens is when you have studied, you know, your content, and you're prepared to present, we typically trip over ourselves and trying to recall all these bunches of information that are just in our Mm -hmm. head. But imagine if you knew specifically that what you wanted to communicate was located at first base and you could visually see that in your mind. Imagine seeing three bullet points at first base. So now you know where that information is. And so what that does is it liberates you to talk freely about it because you know exactly where to go to pull that information back up. So just something as simple as that can cause an individual's delivery, the platform skills to go up significantly, just Mm. because the information is organized. And I tell my clients that if you have to give a speech or a presentation, that 80% 
of the presentation actually happens before you even go on the stage. So, you know, getting your thoughts organized and categorized and sequenced in the right order and placed somewhere in your mind where you know where they are, then that is going to take care of the majority of your delivery. I always say uh, the more you sweat in private, the less you bleed in public. Right. So it's like, <laughs> you have all these clever sayings. <laughs> you just want to make sure that you, you know, put the time in up front so that when showtime comes, you're actually ready. So one is the visual model. I think it's helpful. Two is to, I would say, to plug into people who are communications folks and, you know, listen to the things that they write. So myself, for example, um, I blog weekly and my last blog was three reasons why you should hire a speech coach or a thought partner. And so for someone who may be considering that, it's snackable content that you can just read. You know, you can get a little bit of education from and then just sort of move forward. So one would be the visual model. Two, I would say, would be blogs of folks who are in communications. And then the third, I would say, would be old school. So I'm a lover of books, and I still have to hold the book in my hand um, when I read books. And one book that I would recommend for um, communications is called The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. Mm, And the author, you're familiar with that book? Yes. Okay. Okay, and the author is Camille Gallo, and he's someone, uh, he's a speech coach, and I love him and look up to his work. But there's so much in that book that talks about, you know, how Steve Jobs was successful when he rolled out the iPhone and all of the products that we know uh, for Mac. And so I think if you're going to say, hey, I want to start being serious about, you know, communications, that certainly would be the first book that I would start with. Awesome. And well, this is great because we've we've gotten right into the the sharing of resources. So this was a great segue. I remember being on your website and I saw I saw something about cornerstones, and it it kind of had a series of different diagrams with these concentric circles, and it talked about it was like the three S's: structure, style, and I was scale the other S. Yeah, it it could have been. So I use that Venn diagram model interchangeably. And so I put different things in it all the time. Um, So sometimes I'll have like confidence, connection and clarity. And of course, you know, the Venn diagrams, the things that I try to illustrate when I use those is basically to say, like, if you have these two parts, but you're missing the third part, essentially what the effect of that can be. And when it comes to communications, a lot of times people will naturally be good at one thing or they'll naturally be good at another thing. And then the other thing sort of suffers, just like anything else in life. It's like the things that we do well, we want to do more of. But Mm -hmm. the things that we need to work at and get better at, you know, we're not so anxious to jump into doing those things. And so those using those models is just a technique that I use to try to provide clarity to folks about different aspects of communication. Now, I have to ask this before we wrap up. Okay. Do you have any advice for people who, where public speaking scares them to death? And and they, you know, they break out in the cold sweat. Um, They're sweating and they're bleeding. Yes. (laughs) Off of of your quote, do you have any, any advice that you can offer to those who may be listening? And again, even if it's, just a one-on-one conversation, but it's a high stakes conversation. Obviously you can still be very nervous in delivering that message. Yes, absolutely. So to me, like that comes down to mindset. And interestingly, probably all of my clients to a person, when we talk about anxiety and the anxiety they feel around presentations, it usually goes back to, you know, when they were in elementary school and they raised their hand to answer a question and they said the wrong answer and everybody laughed at them, you know, Mm. and today, you know, they're this successful business person and they're still holding on to that. So I would say, number one, you know, that's mindset. I would say, secondly, you know, public speaking is a skill that you can learn and get better at. And the more that you do it, you get desensitized to some of those fears and uh, anxiety that you may have. Uh, And then I would say, thirdly, here's a way that you can look at it. So when you're standing out, uh, standing in front of an audience and you're looking out at that audience, you can see one of two things. So you can see a mirror when you look out at the audience. And if you look out at your audience and you see a mirror, 
then what you're going to see is all of your flaws, all of the words that you miss, all of the gestures that you're making that don't look good. Maybe you think your outfit doesn't look good. You know, so you just start to destroy yourself when you're looking in that mirror. The other option is to, when you're standing on that stage, is to look out and see a window and look through that window. And if you look through that window, you're looking into the eyes and into the minds and the hearts of the people that you're communicating with. And it's not about you. It's about, you know, the expertise that you have and communicating that expertise to the people who are in front of you. Um, and so I kind of go through that exercise with my clients, the mirror versus the window. And so from a standpoint of mindset, I would just say to make sure that you're looking through the window uh, and not the mirror when you're standing in front of your audience. Wow, that was well said, Des. But of course it would be. Your speech, this is what you do for a living. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Well, unfortunately, we are coming to a close, but how can people get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, Very easy to get in touch with me. Uh, My website is desthornton.com. It's D-E-Z-T-H-O-R-N. T-O-N. And if you go to my website, then there's several ways that you can get in contact with me there. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was great. Uh, lots of nuggets. I love all of the quotables. That's, that's amazing. I really appreciate that. But thank you for taking time out of your schedule. I know you're really busy and you travel quite extensively. So thank you for taking some time out to speak with me today. Well, thank you. And I appreciate you thinking enough of me to have me as a guest. Thank you. Now, now hang on. Hang on the line. We're not, we're not completely over just yet. I'm going to give a recap. So now that you've heard from Des, is there something that he said that resonated with you? If so, how are you going to apply that to your business? As a reminder, Des said that the one thing we need to know about having high stakes conversations and presentations is that it's not what you say, it's what your audience hears. He started off by first defining what exactly a high stakes conversation is. And it's basically any time you have to communicate and your reputation is on the line. Another nugget of wisdom that he dropped for us is whenever you do communicate that high stakes uh, message, Always end by asking that person to repeat back to you what they actually heard. And if you start off by letting people know that you will ask them to clarify what you've said, you'll find that people will actually start to listen more intently. One quotable that Des shared that I really love is that your reputation gets you in the door, but your presentation keeps you in the room. Words are the currency that we use to interact with each other. He gave us a lot of really great examples. If you're driving or you're in route right now as you're listening to this, I highly encourage you, as soon as you can, get over to the website and make sure you download this episode and save it to your digital library. Also, regarding people, processes, and tools, Des told us that it's always great to have thought partners who can actually help you look at your message more objectively and help you kind of craft and hone it even better. As far as the process is concerned, you want to try to think through all of the different scenarios about what can happen when a person actually receives your message good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And as far as tools, he mentioned three. He has a diamond delivery model that we'll be sure to post on the website in the show notes. He also talked about the importance of blogging or any type of online communication where you can showcase your expertise and make sure you convey important messages. And then there was another one, Des, that you said. So you said the blog, the diamond delivery model. And the third was the book by... The um, the book, yes. Yes. The The Presentation presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Now, if you have an important message that you need to communicate, definitely reach out to Des. Again, the best way to contact him is through his website. That is desthornton.com. Again, that's D like dog, E-Z, T like Tom, H-O-R, N like Nancy, T like Tom, O-N like Nancy, dot As a reminder, we'll have links to all of these resources that Des was so kind enough to share with us. We'll have those in the show notes at businessinfrastructure.tv. Did you know that we have a YouTube channel? Yep, that's right. You can now find this show as well as other videos on YouTube. 
just go to businessinfrastructure.tv and look for that link. Now, when you get to our channel, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll know exactly when the next episode airs. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, stay focused, be encouraged. This entrepreneurial journey is a marathon and not a sprint. Until the next time. Thank you for listening to Business Infrastructure, the podcast about curing back office blues with Alicia Butler-Pierre. If you like what you've heard, do us a favor and subscribe, leave a rating and review, and more importantly, share with your colleagues and team members who could benefit from the information. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.